Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. Welcome back to House Fair Friday. Today's video is on a subject that I have wanted to cover for a long time. It's something that overlaps with homemaking, super relevant to many of us who are homemakers, and also relevant to those of us who have permaculture homesteads or farms as well. It is the advantages and disadvantages of cottage industries. Now in permaculture, we talk a lot about diversifying revenue streams. We talk about how you don't wanna put all of your eggs in one basket, right? When you have a monoculture agricultural production, you are investing all of your hopes and dreams and finances into one crop, hence monoculture. If there is a catastrophic crop failure, you're in big trouble for the year and you often end up in a cycle of debt and um, taking out huge loans in order to keep your business going. In permaculture, we want to create resilient systems. And so we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. We want to have things to fall back on. Resilience is what is your bounce back factor, right? So when we diversify our revenue streams, we're not just talking agriculturally. In a permaculture system, we may be relying on things like growing a diversity of crops for the market, a diversity of crops for our pantry if we're a homestead. But it also means there are other avenues that we can embrace to earn those small amounts of income that when collected together form a living. For many of us that are homemakers, we often have one or more members of our household that draw a primary in income, right? But that doesn't mean that that is sufficient in today's life, especially if we have other added expenses that we need to pay for, like braces for our kids or, you know, unexpected uh, home repair bills, or we're saving up for something large, like uh, an important family event or trip, or maybe college for our kids. So we often look to cottage industries to supplement our income. So what is a cottage industry and how can those of us that are homemakers and those of us that engage in diversified permaculture utilize cottage industries? What are we getting into if we decide we want to start a cottage industry? Is it gonna be a good idea? So what is a cottage industry? Cottage industries are traditionally woman run, run from home. They're often run by mothers who are very busy already raising children, caring for children, caring for the domestic sphere, and now are attempting to earn some income to secure their family's finances a bit more. Women are often asked, homemakers are often asked to do everything. We are asked to be super moms, super women, and to take on far more than is realistic for us. So before I dive into what the advantages and disadvantages are, I would really encourage you to think about whether you are going to be spreading yourself too thin by taking on a cottage industry. It is work, it's not a hobby. It is work, it is serious work. And it is something that will be added on top of the other tasks and obligations and unpaid labor you are already doing on a daily basis. So what are the advantages of having a cottage industry? Whether you are producing something like soap from your goat's milk that you have on your property, or you are making earrings to sell, or you are making jams and breads to sell at the local farmer's market, and please check your state's cottage food laws because those vary a lot. Some states will let you produce those things in your home kitchen and some you have to rent a commercial kitchen. Maybe you are doing something like I have done many times in the past and will be doing very soon in the future, which is selling knitted goods or sewn goods or crocheted goods. I had a video earlier today where I talked about how I'm getting ready for a small sale of knitted items and perhaps knitting patterns. For me, I do those kinds of sales so that I can give a significant portion to charity. They're far more for me about giving back to the community out of a hobby that I love than an income stream. But in the past, I've done things like selling salves and um, lip balm and things like that using wax from our bees and herbs from our garden. Engaged in selling all kinds of things like plant starts and house plant displays. Those things have been really good learning experiences for me. Not necessarily profitable when you break it down by hour, but they are all things I could do out of my home. So that's the number one thing I think when we think about a cottage industry is that you can do it from home while caring for children, while you are incurring a very low startup cost. You don't have to rent a space. You don't have to have transportation to and from your work you have a much lower startup cost when you have a cottage industry and you are able to do it from home. 
So there's much less risk to a cottage industry because you don't have to take out a large loan. You're not investing a large amount of capital into the startup of your business. You can start very small and hopefully over time scale up if that's what you want to do. It gives you a chance to, to test the waters a little bit for the product that you have. Another advantage of cottage industries is that they are supporting a local economy, local micro economies. When I became somebody who started going to these sales to sell plants, to sell things that I made out of my little farmstead, I began to appreciate the micro local economy much more. Other small cottage industries, how can I support them? How can I support producers by sourcing my supplies locally as well? When you are a local producer, you start to think much more about what would benefit you, what would help sustain your business, and how can you do the same for others? It gets us cultivating a mindset of supporting a local community. The third thing would be that cottage industries allow us to draw a little bit of extra income. Maybe all you're looking for is to make enough money from your cottage industry to support your hobby. I would encourage us not to see our hobbies as something that we have to turn into a hustle. We shouldn't feel like we have to, in this current cultural climate, make everything about profit. In fact, one of my friends, Maggie, is really explicit about how her sewing hobby, and she is a very skilled sewist who makes beautiful clothes. I will link to her Instagram down below. She is asked all the time, why don't you turn that into a side hustle? And she doesn't want to, because it's her hobby. My eldest child, Ruth, loves to draw. And she's said repeatedly how some of her drawing and painting is so important to her, she needs to keep it as a hobby and not a money-making venture because that would suck a lot of the joy out of it. So I would encourage us to be careful when we're trying to turn our hobbies into a revenue stream as to whether that's something we really want to do, especially when our hobbies are something that um, help us feel more resilient in our daily lives to begin with. There's something that recharges us and something that we value independent of any income that comes from them. But for some people, being able to draw a little bit of income derived from your hobby makes your hobby sustainable. It may be like with me selling salves where I used wax for my bees, that helped me afford beekeeping equipment. It helped me afford uh, to be able to do beekeeping as a hobby that I value and enjoy. Being able to sell honey at the local farmer's market helped ensure that I could replace my beekeeping supplies. I didn't make a lot of money off of it. It was just enough to help me keep my hobby going so that my hobby itself was self-supporting and not a drain on the family budget. But should you want to make a real income from your cottage industry or hobby, again, your cottage industry does not have to be tied to your hobby at all. But should you want to make a real income, I would encourage you to sit down and break down the math. How much does it cost to run your cottage industry? And are you truly making a sustainable income off of it? So let's talk about some disadvantages before you dive headlong into, yes, I'm a homemaker or I have my permaculture garden and I need to make money off of it. I need to have a home-based business. So look at what the actual wage is that you are making. Oh, hello, my dog is coming to say hi to me. Hello, Athena. Look at what the actual wage is that you are making. Is it sustainable? Is it a livable wage? Can you justify the time you are taking away from other members of your household, particularly children? Because again, we often put cottage industries on the shoulders of young mothers with young children who need parenting. The kids need parenting. Parenting is a relationship and it takes time and connection. Cottage industries often have a higher overhead cost and that's because we can't buy in bulk. There is the economy of scale and larger companies can buy in bulk and save substantially. So we have a higher overall cost for our materials. Another disadvantage is that marketing is difficult. We are asking the person running the cottage industry, producing the product to also be the marketing team and also be the distribution team. And that is a lot of hats for someone to wear who already has a hat of a homesteader or a farmer or a homemaker or a parent. That's asking a lot. For me, when I went to sales, I did a number of sales um, where I would get invited to, you know, with a holiday market of this business or, you know, the seasonal market of this Waldorf school. By the time I paid my entry fee to whatever, um, you know, company or school I was going to, to have my booth. 
For the number of hours I spent making my product, getting it ready, and then sitting at the fair for eight hours, it was not worth my money. I was relying on these events to do the marketing and they just didn't draw in enough people and I didn't sell enough product. And I didn't really have a better way to market. Um, I would just say, if you are somebody who loves to make a product and loves to sell it, do you love marketing it? And do you love also keeping your books and doing your finances and doing your self-employment taxes? Because that's a whole other level of maybe disadvantage. So I would encourage you, if you are thinking about doing a cottage industry, is it really something that you want to take on? Is it something that is good for your household? Is it something that is worth the time and commitment and stress? Is it worth the time it takes away from other things you find meaningful, like being out in your garden, like reading stories to your kids? like being home and having a quiet evening by the fire? Are there other ways you could cut back in your budget so that you do not need the income from a cottage industry? If you feel a cottage industry is sustainable, you have a good product to market, you have a customer base for your product, and you feel that you have the energy and the ability to run a cottage industry, what are your long-term goals and how will it benefit your whole system? How will it benefit other folks in your household? How will it benefit your permaculture system if that is what you are running? Because Sorry. it's okay. I'm not mad at you. Your video got 15, I know it's doing good. I need to have realistic expectations about what I'm going to make in terms of profit and realistic expectations about how much I am willing to give to the cottage industry. What other things I value in my life that will be diminished or I will have less energy for because I'm focusing on this cottage industry. So yes, there's wonderful potential to think like, well, I can still do the work I really value as a homemaker or a homesteader and also draw a little bit more income so that I can pay some of the bills that enable me to continue this lifestyle I value so much. But it's good to go into it with open eyes and know that what we are um, undertaking is sustainable and profitable and achievable. I would say a little caveat here at the end, I view Park Rose Permaculture as a full-time business. I view it as a serious vocation. I do not view it as hobby income whatsoever. I do view those other sales that we have on the side and have done for the last 10 years as a source of hobby income. And I really partition how I think about them, how I look at the finances of them, and how much energy I am willing to give to them. It's okay to have a main business and also have a cottage income. It's okay to be a full-time businesswoman and also have a cottage income. It's okay to be a full-time unpaid homemaker and also have a cottage income. You have to figure out what works best for your life with your finances. And please remember, that this is your one life that you get. There is more to life than just bringing in more revenue, right? I know that we live in a climate and I am very, very much aware because this is something that hits very hard for us where if I just had a little bit more financial security, I could do so many more things. Is a cottage industry something that will give you that increased security? Ask yourself that. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Please leave your comments down below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this subject. I will be back from outdoors in my permaculture garden tomorrow. Oh, and please click like and subscribe to my main business, Park Rose Permaculture, and I will let you know more about my cottage industry knitting sale coming up in the coming weeks. Thanks.